What is up YouTube? I am Casey with bestinvestingapps.com and today you are watching our Mint review 2017. We're going to be talking about the Mint app. It's a web and mobile app for tracking personal finances. What is it? How does it work? A little bit of behind the scenes, what I like and don't like about it and whether or not I think you should be using it. So stay tuned. Plus, if you stick around, I'm going to be announcing some really cool, exciting news about something called Project 100 over at Best Investing Apps. If you are interested in Project 100 or how you can become a guest author on Best Investing Apps, make sure you stick around till the end. We'll talk more about that. For now, let's dig into Mint. What is it and how does it work? Mint is a uh, aggregate service, so it takes a bunch of different accounts, your checking account, your banking account, your investment accounts, it pulls them all together in one place and then it analyzes those for you so it can track your income, your expenses, your fees, your growth, budgeting, and that sort of thing. Now this is what Mint looks like from the back side. I have linked a few of my accounts to get some actual numbers in here. I've been using Mint for many years. Although recently I've stopped using it as much and I'll tell you why in a little bit. One of the biggest drawbacks to Mint and one of the reasons that I moved away from it recently is because it makes all of its money by advertising things to you. And I hate that. So we have this alerts column here and it says like you're paying blank more than basically clickbait, right? And then it says you can save blah, blah, blah. Just click here. Well, they make money off of all of those leads. And almost all these alerts are kind of self-serving for Mint. Uh, as I scroll down, it's got some suggested offers. Of course, it's gonna Mint is gonna make money off of that. Uh, down here at the bottom, ways to save. These are all ways that Mint is gonna make money off of you. Over the years of using Mint, I have found by and large, there's not much here that is really useful for me. That could be different for you, but mostly it's just advertising things to me that I don't need or won't use. When I navigate to the bills section, I don't really have any bills section here. I don't link much in that way. You can link your credit cards and your recurring bills to this section um, and pay them through here. I have found that usually services like your insurance service, your credit cards, your mortgage, whatever it is, most of them are just easier to set up automatic payments through that service. Like I have a Capital One card that I can just set it up so that that card pays itself off and I'd rather do that through Capital One than go through Mint. So I find this service to be not very useful for me. Mint does have a pretty powerful budgeting set of tools. Now, I've gone back to January of this year. I have some budgets in here that I can show you as an example. Um, I had a big repair on the car. It cost me $535. My normal budget per month is $72. I don't use Mint's budgeting well at all. So these numbers are really poorly done. Um, but for instance, uh, it tracks that I spent 20 out of my $40 for gas and fuel. And you can come in and create new budgets. So you can choose out of different categories. You can set it up for monthly or um, any other time frame. You can also save it so that it rolls over into new months. So this is a, similar to like envelope budgeting where if you don't use it one month, you keep it in there. So like if $20 a month for clothes, right? And you don't spend any of that $20 for three months. Now you've got 60 bucks on month three, you can spend all 60. So that's kind of a handy different budgeting tool that you can use there. I like it, but you have to stay on top of it. You got to track it and you need to set reasonable budget goals. The goals section of Mint is pretty cool. I used it for a while when I was using Mint more regularly. Um, I used it to save to fund my first emergency fund and my first retirement uh, investment. It's kind of nice that so you can come in, you can set up a new savings. Um, it even does your emergency fund calculation for you. So it already knows what your average monthly spending is based on your linked accounts. It wants to know how long you want to be prepared to survive. So I want to survive six months. It says I need $7,000. Click next. It walks you right through everything. But again, it tries to sell me things here. It tries to like advertise the FNBO thing. I want that. I want to do it myself. I find the ads annoying. The trends tab is by far the most helpful part of Mint, in my opinion, and any personal uh, expense tracker. Most personal expense trackers have a similar feature, 
but it's basically a visual way to get a handle on what you're spending and how you're spending it. You come in here and it'll show you what you've been spending. So food and dining, 13 transactions, shows me exactly what uh, I've been spending. Now here's the thing, you gotta really stay on top of it almost every day because quickly things will pile up. Like Robin Hood in alcohol and bars, $10. Well, this is my weekly $10 transfer to the Robin Hood investment app. I don't know where it's getting Robin Hood in or why it's categorizing it as alcohol and bars. But you can come in and change these tags and set it so that in the future it's it does it correctly. I find that Mint is, is not very intelligent about the way that it categorizes things and it causes me to have to do a lot of it by hand, which unfortunately takes out some of the usefulness of the app. But you can really get a good sense of what's going on in your finances. Why is it not? Oh, okay, here we go. In your finances with some of these tools. So I had to change it to the last 12 months. You can see where the accounts that I have linked to it, how they're changing over time. Income over time. I wanna change it to the last 12 months. You can see your income varying. Now this is gonna be dependent on what accounts you have linked as well as how long they've been linked and how long Mint's been able to track them. Not too long ago, I linked up one of my investment accounts to see how Mint does with tracking it. I found that it's pretty confusing and doesn't seem to be super accurate. It's been telling me that lately I'm underperforming the S&P by about 4% in March, and I know that that is not the case. It's simply not correct. So I'm not really sure where it's getting the numbers or how it's calculating. For instance, you can see this mega spike thing here that showed up minus 77%. I have no idea where that's coming from or how that got in there. I monitor my investments very closely. I'm not sure where that's coming from. It's not very clean. In theory, it's really good and I kind of like what it's doing here, but it hasn't been working for me. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm missing. But it does have a nice allocation and performance tool. Um, so maybe this will work better for you. Maybe I'm uh, something's not quite working for me, but I like it in theory. In practice, it doesn't seem to be working that great for me. Finally, let's check out the Ways to Save tab here on the side. This is basically just a pile of referral advertisements. You can see here, Featured Partner. I'm not saying Chase is bad. I have a Chase account, nothing wrong with Chase, but these advertisements don't really take into consideration a whole lot about you. Some of these cards may or may not be worth your time. Um, you can look at, at different ways to do your investments. For instance, uh, Wealthfront and Betterment, both awesome robo-advisors. There's nothing wrong with Wealthfront or Betterment. Um, and if you choose to use something through here, Mint will make a referral commission off of that. Uh, there are good things to be found. I find that they're few and far between, and I end up doing my research off of Mint. I do my research through Google and reading reviews and watching reviews and reading books. So I rarely find that Mint has something to offer me that I can't learn better or equally somewhere else. Remember, if our video has been helpful to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We do new videos every day of the week, and there will be plenty more to come. Give it a like if we helped you make money, save money, or avoid making a mistake. And check the links in the show notes below for any of the topics that we've talked about that I can link to. The resources will be down there for you. So I promised to introduce Project 100 and tell you a little bit about what it is. Essentially, it was born from the idea of using my Valentine's gift from my wonderful girlfriend, the Freedom Journal by John Lee Dumas, basically to accomplish my number one goal in 100 days. Well, that number one goal is growing best investing apps into the best resource that it can be to help you guys out. So, Project 100, if you go over to bestinvestingapps.com, on the side menu here, you can find it or just type in bestinvestingapps.com slash project-100 and that will take you to the project 100 page you can find out what it is what all are we tracking why do i need your help and how can you get involved and become a guest author like 
John Wick, who, by the way, is not actually a guest author. He is just an example.